Hello, welcome to this edition of the Dean's Income Show. My name is Matt Kite for the Sports Information Director here with the Vulcans of California. With me is Head Coach Dean Income. After a nice big victory this past weekend up in Erie, uh, always nice to be getting a drive home, especially on 79 after a victory, I'm sure. No doubt about it. Uh, the rides home are always a little bit better when you win. Now, it's been a while since we've had you in the studio here, but again, uh, over Christmas break, uh, obviously the nice six weeks off for students, but the first day back for classes today, so a lot more activity on campus. But you guys have certainly been going at it. Uh, what's it like for you as a coach, the challenge of having guys here on campus with no other students here, no classes? It's just them and the women's team, really, for six weeks here on campus for the better part of it, and just trying to keep them motivated, active, uh, keeping you engaged with everything. Well, I think that's the big thing. You know, I think it's a time where you can grow as a team because you are spending much more time with each other than you are. You know, there's no classes and so forth. You, you really become a professional team for those six weeks, and we try to treat it like that. And uh, our guys, you know, we've got good chemistry, a lot of new guys, but uh, really, you know, bonded a little bit more. I feel like we've got closer as a team, and I felt like we've really been able to get better over the last six weeks. Uh, on both sides of the ball. We're executing better, we're playing better defense on, on, on the defensive end, so I feel like the six weeks were good and now we get back to school uh, today. It's uh, you know hectic, back to going to classes and practicing and playing games now, so we gotta get back into that mindset now. Yeah, over the break period there, uh, Donald Whitehead, redshirt freshman, uh, missed a year with COVID, then out last year was able to come back. And he's been a nice attribute there for the uh, bench there, giving another point guard to really lighten the load for DJ and also play his natural position of point guard. That's going to be nice to have him finally in the roster and seeing him acclimated into the game. Yeah, it's great to have Donald, and he's made a big difference with our team. He does, uh, you know, gives us the ability to get guys easier shots, and he has the ability to score as well. He makes things happen on the defensive end. He gets his hands on basketballs and does a good thing. And for a size, he's rebounded the ball very well for us. And just, you know, he's going to continue to get better. You know, when you uh, miss your high school season with COVID, you tear your Achilles, I really feel like uh, he's just getting his feet underneath of him and he'll continue to get better as the year goes on and we'll need him to. Yeah, a unique situation there for Saturday. His sister is an assistant coach for the women's team at Gannon and their mom was a decorated coach in the high school ranks. So always good to have a coach's kid. Uh, the idea of being around the game so much, they're used to criticism, they understand uh, how to take it and also the idea of the hours that go into coaching and playing with basketball. Yeah, and Donald's just, uh, he's a terrific kid. Like he really, uh, really listens, really, you know, is coming into his own, and uh, it was neat. His mom also is a graduate of Gannon, so uh, they were up there, obviously, uh, you know, uh, cheering uh, for the uh, girls' team, but uh, they were definitely cheering for us, uh, you know, to, to win the game for sure. I, I know how they are, and they want Donald to do well, and I know they were cheering for the Vulcans. Well, looking back here to Wednesday, basically a week ago from now, uh, home versus Edinburgh, a team there uh, that came in, uh, one of those things you – beginning of West play really for the most part at home. Uh, nice game there by a number of guys having double figures, four guys in double figures. K.J. McClurg leading the way there with uh, 22 points. Yeah, K.J. played great that game on both ends of the ball. He had a tough assignment on defense and did a really good job defending. And then offensively, you know, he was able, I think he was three for five from the three. Uh, he had some nice drives and finishes. He was able to get to the foul line. Just a complete game for him. K.J. always does all the intangibles, the little things. He rebounds the ball well for us. Uh, but he just was able to put a complete game together uh, on, against Edinburgh. And uh, he's just going to continue to get better, too. I see him getting more comfortable in our offense, understanding our defensive rotations. Uh, really excited uh, with him. He's got a bright future in the program. Yeah, you can see a couple plays here. Jermaine Hall, uh, nice dunk early to start in the game. And there it's almost an alley-oop in the end. One play. He finished with 10 points, six rebounds. And then Keith Palak, again, 18 points, nine boards. Uh, for us. Basically just one of those guys who fills up the stat sheet. Every stat has at least a couple things going on in each game for Keith. Yeah, you know, first, you know, going back to Jermaine, same similar situation, obviously, with uh, Donald, you know, with the Achilles injury. And I feel like Jermaine is getting better as the year goes on. I'm starting to see him move better on defense. He's scoring the ball for us. He's been doing that all year, but he's just getting better, being more efficient for us in there and just brings a lot of toughness for us. And then Keith, obviously, like you mentioned, he fills the box score. He's a very talented uh, offensive player. Um, you know, he passes the ball exceptionally well. He shoots it very well. He can post. He can put the ball on the floor. He passes it well. It creates for others. You know, it's played very, very well for us. And then Cam didn't have his best game uh, against Edinburgh, but he's been so good for us too. And he's another guy that's new to the program that has played really well for us 
this year. And, uh, you know, he's as good a shooter as there is in our league. And he can put the ball on the floor and score as well. So that nucleus I feel really good about. You're talking about freshmen and sophomores uh, and one junior. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about it. And it's one of those things you're not going to see in the highlights here, but a game uh, ends up being 78-63, but in the second half shooting 14 to 17 from the line, uh, one of those things that basically even for the most part point was from the field, but the free throw lines is really what sealed the and kept the victory at bay and keep the fighting Scots down. Yeah, and we and we you know we work on that. We want to be a team that attacks and puts pressure on the defense, puts pressure on the uh, officiating to you know make calls and uh, be aggressive on that, and then when you get there and you convert. It, uh, you know, they're free points. So uh, we did a really good job with that, especially in the second half. Okay, and as we said, uh, Saturday led to a road trip there, uh, making the trip up to 79, first of three trips to Erie County really this year, uh, facing a Gannon team that on paper everybody sees, oh, no wins this year, but you and I have talked multiple times already. Uh, they're a lot better than they, their record indicates. Uh, Lost scores are close, but they become a little bit separated there at the end. Uh, what's the message there you guys had to give the team, again, a young team, saying the idea of don't look at the win-loss record, it's a road game, historically very tough place to play at, whatever they, whatever they call the arena name. Uh, it's been historically tough to play at. And again, uh, they have to find a way to rebound the ship somewhere sooner or later up there uh, with the Golden Knights. Yeah, and with us, you know, uh, it's not like you can't talk about a team's record anymore. You know, the, the players know, uh, you know, they have all this information right there for them. So, you know, they know. But uh, if you watch them on film, they have talented players that can play. And they have been in a lot of close games. Uh, the Wednesday before they played IUP and I think it was a nine point game but it was a close basketball game and they had chances to uh, win. They defend extremely well. They're, they hold teams of 41 percent so we were a little worried as a coaching staff just with their physicality and we haven't played well on the road the last three or four games uh, so we didn't know what to expect and when we went up there um, our defense the first half really kept us in the game because offensively we struggled uh, and we were able to defend and uh, hold them to 28 points and uh, have a one-point lead uh, going into the second half, which, which to me was the game because I felt like we were getting some good looks. I thought we had to make some adjustments uh, against their defense, which we were able to do in the second half, and, and, and we just – played really well offensively in the second half. Yeah, I mean, in the second half, he scored 54 points. Uh, he's, and as a coach, uh, it's one of those things you got to love to see that kind of point there. And we see Jermaine Hall with an easy layup there. But again, the, the story of the second half was definitely Jermaine uh, right there on the outside uh, is where he made his money at in this game, uh, scoring 25 points, 7 of 10 uh, from the line. You talk about a guy who can stretch the court, uh, a guy who can dunk it with anybody and also shoot on the outside with anybody right now. So this is one of those games, he's, any time he touched the ball, he seemed like he was going to find a way to get that ball and, and find a way to score. Yeah, and I'm hard on Jermaine. I love Jermaine. He's got such a good attitude and is invested in the team uh, and is, is, is leading our team. And for him, you know, he missed his first three three-pointers of the game. So he made his last seven, uh, going seven for ten from the three-point line, which was big. But then he had eight rebounds and just did the toughness – plays for us so he was uh, a big reason why we scored 54 points in the second half but if you look through the film and you're watching it here he's taking great looks and other guys are making great passes that maybe could take a good shot but are making the extra uh, extra pass so he can have a great shot and he was just the benefit he benefited from the extra pass and he knocked him down, so it was a big game for him. Yeah, in addition to him, Keith Palkowin for 23, uh, had three threes, five rebounds, six assists. You talk about the idea of, again, six, the guy is six, seven, six assists. It's easy, one of those things you get to be able to look over the defense, see where the open guys are, and he was able to do that uh, multiple times throughout the contest. I thought in the second half, Keith passed the ball exceptionally well, played very, very well offensively um, for us. He did, and he uh, had some really good passes that led to easy baskets, but then he had some nice moves that just – you know, he beat his guy and uh, finished at the rim, and he got it going a little bit from the perimeter as well. And most important, I think he was eight for eight from the foul line. Getting to the foul line for us is uh, important, and converting him was big as well. Another game was close in the first half. Second half, 16 to 19 from the line, 8 of 14 from uh, three-point lane. So that's definitely leading itself to getting 54 points in the contest. You shoot that well in the second half uh, from the f uh, beyond the arc and at the free throw line. Efficient, and, you know, what goes with being efficient is taking good shots and and i can't stress that enough when we're moving the ball around and we have guys that get their feet set and are open they shoot the ball well yeah
And again, uh, that's uh, two rounds, two games of conference play. But again, we got a couple more ones here coming up tough this week. Uh, tomorrow with Mercyhurst, a team uh, that is actually tied for second in the PSAC West standings right now. A team that's a perennial team that's in the NCAA tournament. Uh, great defensively, year in and year out. It's one of those things that they've always found a ways to keep everybody down. We can see the standings there right now. Mercyhurst and EPJ tied for two, second. Uh, Slippery Rocket uh, fourth. And then Cows is one game back at the five. Uh, so it's IEP again is doing what they want to do at the top but again uh, they still got a, they played a great game with UPJ almost had them there at the UP, uh, UPJ's home court but uh, a lot of the tight uh, matches was right at the top of the standings right now yeah big week for us uh, you know you mentioned Mercyhurst uh, they uh, really do defend well coached team play hard uh, you know defensively uh, a lot of switching uh, involved and they do a good job of guarding the basketball it always starts there um, but they do a really good job of helping um, you know, uh, they're a little bit smaller, but they're scrappy. They get their hands on uh, a lot of passes, and they rebound. Uh, they're tough, and they get in there and rebound. And on the flip end, offensively, they're one of the best passing teams um, that I've seen this year. You know, and it kind of hand in hand. I thought the, I think their team's almost identical to what it was last year. They move the ball very well, um, and they shoot it very well. And I think they're, you know, as a team, they're like 42% from the three. They're very efficient out there because they move it and they take a lot of open threes. And then on Saturday's big trip up to the KCAC, a place again, Cal's quite familiar with over the last couple of years of PSAC tournament, NCAA tournament last year. IEP coming into the, uh, the week, number one in the country, uh, justifiably so undefeated. Uh, bring a lot of guys back. They lost their money. Foster to Buffalo last year, uh, but Shondale Jones is back. Morris is back. Porterfield's back. Uh, it's just another another year for the Crimson Hawks to seemingly right now. Uh, with what uh, Coach Lombardi has up there for Saturday's test. Yeah, another uh, a program that uh, is uh, just well coached and plays extremely hard. They're very good defensively. Offensively, you know, they have basketball players, guys that can make shots, guys that can make plays. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have to be able to guard and contain basketball, be able to rebound it and be very physical. Um, and, and we're going to have to really work on offense to move the ball so we can get open shots. They make it difficult on teams. But, you know, we'll look, we'll look at IUP a little bit more after we get through Wednesday uh, with Mercyhurst. Yeah, and again, just looking at the standings before the show here, looking at the PSAC East, um, it's one of those things that, again, crossovers plays, it's a crapshoot. You never know who you're going to get each year. But looking at it, East Strasburg is number one in the East, or eight and one. Uh, and then tied for second, Slockhaven and Shippensburg, two teams that are seven and two. And it's one of those things, all three of those teams you saw in crossover play. So the idea of the rigorous schedule, you've already seen some of the best teams you could possibly face, not counting the West Liberty game you faced earlier in the year. Yeah, you know, we try to play a tough schedule. Obviously, uh, not knowing, the, you know, the crossovers and so forth, uh, Lock Haven uh, is a really good team uh, this year. Uh, you know, East Stroudsburg is as good a team, I think, in our region uh, this year. Uh, you know, so it's a dogfight. It really is like in the PSAC, um, night in and night out. Uh, you have to play at a high level, and you got to do the things that you do well as a team if you want to have an opportunity to win. If you don't, um, you're going to be scratching your head and thinking a lot, I could have or we should have, but you've got to be able to go out there and execute and play uh, when you get into conference play. Yeah, and again, uh, talking to those teams in the East there, the Bevo Francis Award released, top 100 got released this week. And in, in the region, just looking at it, there was uh, seven guys. And of the seven guys in the region, six will be opponents for Cal. So, again, seeing some of the best players in the country, two from East Stroudsburg, one obviously Carlos Pippen, two for IUP, West Liberty, Butler, and Kromka at UPJ, and then Sanders uh, at Fairmont State. So those are guys you've seen quite a number of times, either on film or against there. So the idea of seeing the best players in the region, it's one of those things. It's a good test for these younger teams teams to be able to see uh, what kind of players there are in the region and going against them each day. Yeah, our region is, I mean, you know, you start looking at the Mountain East Conference and you look at the CIAA and you look at the PSAC, it's, it's great. I mean, it really is. And when you get an opportunity to represent, um, you know, the one team, obviously IUP did a great job, um, you know, getting to the Final Four last year. You know, West Liberty's had some big runs uh, in the uh, – tournament our, our region is always represented well when it gets to the elite eight because it's competitive and it's hard to get out 
uh, of the region to, to have an opportunity to do that. And again, it would be remiss without reference in Bebo Francis Award. Last year, obviously, Philip Alston uh, was a big-time final top 25 guy for that one. And congratulations to Phil for over the weekend reaching 1,000 points, scoring almost 700 last year, such a big part of the program. Uh, his transition to playing at Loyola Chicago Division One, obviously, that'd be something there. Proud to see he made the transition so easily, but also making an impact still for a program like that. Yeah, I mean, I think he's leading their team in uh, scoring and rebounding. I mean, I would say uh, Phil's a great player, hard worker. You know, I think uh, you know wherever he would have went, he would be successful. He's a great, great kid who works extremely hard, and it's good to see him having a, a great year for sure. Okay, Coach. Well, again, we thank you for taking the time today, and uh, best of luck there tomorrow at Mercier's at the Convocation Center. Tip-off at 7.30 p.m. The following on that, on Saturday, up at the KCAC at IEP, 3 p.m. tip against the Crimson Hawks, who enter the week number one in the country. So, again, tall task for the Vulcans, tough challenges, but I know uh, you guys are ready for that one and see how the week goes. Looking forward to a big week for us. Well, thanks again for watching the Danny Stancombe Show. Stay tuned to CalVulcans.com and follow CUTV for all the latest news and action.